Alright, been a little while since update, but we've got quite a bit of uh, control work done. Uh, you might have noticed a video on the channel of Alcatraz. Uh, Steve and the rest of the folks took a little trip out to Cali, uh, away from the zero degree weather. Uh, I was unable to attend, so I was here stuck working, but able to work on the layout in the evenings and got quite a bit done. Uh, this is Wallace Junction, it's now done. Everything's hooked up, um, all wired up. I'll kind of just give you a brief overview of how everything works and and how it all went. So uh, the two switches there on the uh, interchange yard, they're just normal tortoise switches. They just do their thing there and that throws the switch over there. So that's all well and good. Um, the switches here, if you remember, I, I showed the circuit uh, for going into... Um, there we go. How's that? Uh, so now they're in motor. And if you put it into hand, okay, the LED goes on that shows the machines in hand. And then if you go to reverse, obviously the crossover throws, and bingo, we get the light uh, showing the crossover. So that all worked relatively well. Back to the main, and then you take it out of back to motor, and there we go. So that all worked. Um, I'll show you how I tested the uh, the computer. I simulated the computer throwing the switch, but I'll show that in, in a minute. Um, so this is the front side, and uh, give it a quick pause. We'll take a look at the back. All right, there's everything installed in the back. Showed you this when it was uh, on the bench. Uh, I did go ahead and add a little light there to it, so you can see that. I'm not sure how well on video it's going to show up, but uh, this is the uh, the SMC card that controls the switches that are the the main line crossovers and the one going into the into the branch that can be dispatcher controlled these are the those little boards there I know it's a mess now but uh, those are the boards that give you the uh, the light I talked about that previously these are all the LED lights coming down and then they're all wired down to the terminal boards for the switches so and the outputs to go back to the eventually to the S mini card or on that terminal board there in the back, the purple and brown wires are going to go back and feed back the, uh, an output and an input, an input to, uh, to show the position and the uh, output to actually control it when it's in motor. So uh, this one's all done. And uh, real quick, I'll just kind of explain how we do the, uh, the throw uh, to simulate the computer. All right, so to simulate the computer or the dispatcher, throwing the switch. I hooked this one up. I took the, uh, this is off of the output line that would come from the S-Mini uh, and this is ground. I mean all it does to throw the switch is basically it just grounds the output uh, which tells the switch to move. Um, and if it's open circuit, what it is now, the switch is normal and if you actually go and then the computer would boom, so then it, and it throws the crossover that crossover there and then when the dispatcher tells it to open or I'm sorry to go normal it just opens it and it goes normal so that's how the computer control it so I, I did test every single one of these so I tested all of them on all the control cabinets that are done uh, just to verify that, that it does work that way and uh, it all works so that's that was kind of fun to uh, to see how uh, at some point in time the computer will actually throw them so Let's see what else we got done. So here's the inside of that, kind of a mess. Like I guess I probably ought to work on cleaning the wires up a little bit. Um, I reused a lot of the double pole, double throw switches. That's why you'll see quite a few um, butt connectors there to reuse the switches. I didn't feel like unsoldering everything. Uh, but that's what the inside looks like. And of course that all goes up and gets uh, hinged in place. Okay, CP97, very similar, it's done as well. Uh, the difference being here that for the Fairview drill, team track, sorry, again the crew would come along and put that in hand normal, and then they can throw that switch. And then it's back. That actually is not going to be uh, computer controlled, that's just going to be Basically, you can see it says locked, um, so it's just locked. And I have an idea for some other switches. Uh, I'll show you a little bit later on what I might do to 
make it a little bit more prototypical, uh, I think. Um, this was just done uh, way back in the early, early planning stages, but uh, that's the front of it. Yeah, it is a lot tighter. I don't know if I can get a good view of this, but this is the back of it. Uh, again, the three cards that are there for the uh, for the motor and the hand control, the uh, the feedback to the S Mini, the purple brown SMC12, and then the ground and the LEDs that uh, come from inside the cabinet. So, and then the, obviously these are the uh, the wires that come from the the turnouts themselves from the tortoise machines back in and get routed inside the cabinet. So these are two small ones. Let's take a look at one of the bigger ones. Okay, here's your Gene East, uh, all complete. Uh, in fact, it, it actually totally is complete. I put all the other switches in, even though the track's not there yet, but they're all in and they're all wired. Um, my thought there was I'd, like, I'd get them in, uh, everything's wired up. Um, I did test it, and I'll show you real quick how I tested that. Uh, and then basically, for example, probably the next turnout that'll go in will be this one here for the yard one track which would be right now so when I get that in drill the hole put the tortoise on all I gotta do is run the cable the wires back to the back of the cabinet hook it up and it's good to go because uh, everything's po it's powered and the LEDs are hooked up and the switch is ready to go and, and and I did test it so that's the outside and again very similar to uh, how the other ones work uh, this is just a straight turnout for the inner motor yard that just does its thing up there. And then these are again, it could be either dispatcher or when it goes into hand, and then it just does its thing. So, and then back out of and back into motor. Uh, obviously, the ones that can be dispatcher controlled uh, if we're using a dispatcher. Or if we're just running trains without the computer, we can still throw all the switches. So that is the uh, the front side there. Like I said, these are all in and wired up. And uh, let me see if we can get. It's awful dark. I'll see if we can get a video of the back just for uh, just for fun. Yeah, I'm not sure how well it's kind of dark back here. That's the back of the cabinet. Um, again, on this particular one, I had it to kind of wire it all in place just because there's so many more turnouts. Um, Again, there's the, the 12 volt and the 5 volt over there. That's the output to the, uh, again, back to the S-Mini to control the switches. Uh, all the LEDs come into that Euro block there. Uh, they're all just wired down, screwed in. So if one does burn out, it's got to pull it out and swap it. Don't have to unsolder anything. Um, like I said, all the other switches, um, the main switches across the top there, if you follow the dancing light, those are the ones that are in place. And one of the other ones is wired in. You see the wires coming in. I apologize, the light's not that great. But that's actually wired in from the intermodal yard. So everything else is all hooked up. So really all I gotta do is when I get those turnouts installed, of course I gotta make them first, they're all fast tracks. But when I get them made and then uh, get the tortoise in, all I gotta do is bring the wires in, land them on the appropriate terminal block, and they're good to go. Uh, so I wanted to kind of work ahead and get everything done. So as soon as I get the uh, track laid and turnouts in, they'll be in and they'll be controllable. Um, a lot of wiring, but I can't see these are the the wires coming in from the, the various switches. Had to run them from way down yonder. Um, bring them over, bring them in. A lot of fun doing that stuff. Uh, so that's the back of uh, Eugene East. All right. So here's how. Just real quick, how I tested the. Uh, all of these switches. Um, I actually went in the back and those two uh, test leads are actually connected to the where the 1 and the 8 from the tortoise would go. Because all the power is running and everything so that's exactly what I would do. Although the tortoise wouldn't be here. Uh, this is actually this turnout right here which right now is undercovered by all kinds of other stuff. But uh, when it goes in uh, all I have to do is run the wires back, hook them up and then throw the toggle. And we got a turnout. So now obviously the LEDs don't work because they don't have the uh, the contacts wired down. Um, Steve did test all the LEDs, so I'm pretty confident they're going to work. They've worked everywhere else, um, you know, down in here doing their thing. So I think that should work. But I did go through and every single one of these, hooked it up, 
put the test wires onto the one and eight where they'll actually wire in through them all to make sure they're all wired right there's no bad solder connections or anything like that and they all work uh, so it should be pretty much uh, a little bit easier you know once you get the switches the turnouts I'm sorry laid the uh, and then the tortoise installed just got to run back the five wires the one the eight and the two three four that I'm using for the lights land them on the terminal board in the back and they're good to go so very limited time it'll take us once we get the uh, turnouts made and then the track laid okay so this mess is the inside of Eugene East again you'll, you'll see a bunch of I reused all of the old all, so far all, everyone I had old of the uh, double throw double throw uh, miniature toggles I've, I've reused them from the old layout so that's why I kind of had to hook up some uh, some butt connections and whatnot because I didn't want to uh, unsweat and ha you know unsolder stuff um, it kind of mess I, I understand that I'm probably gonna do a little bit of cleanup I know where everything goes uh, but still I want to work on a little bit of you know just cleaning things up so you can follow a little bit better uh, there's the SMC 12 card that controls the the dual control turnouts ground bus and the three boards there you can barely see them that do the the hand auto with the LED um, so that's what the inside looks like definitely needs a little bit of cleanup but uh, it's amazing like I said, it's absolutely amazing how fast things get uh, very very uh, crowded inside these control cabinets so Let's go check out Eugene West. Okay, Eugene West. Again, that's all also finished. I also do have the uh, DCC power uh, coming from the, the main bus up to here that will eventually power, which now has wiring and other devices, uh, label maker and some crimpers and whatnot. Um, so I can turn those tracks off so I don't have a cacophony of sound when uh, the, the system boots up and I got, you know, 14, 15 sound equipped engines like that guy there making noise now you can hear him um, so again this is all done uh, very similar to the other ones I won't go into much more detail because these all get kind of monotonous um, like I said I did actually wire in well I mean, let me just go around the back and I'll just kind of show you that just so you get a chance to see it and again I apologize for the darkness I won't even try with a flashlight I'm not sure that works but again very similar um, the, the Turnouts up here are the ones that can be either uh, dispatcher controlled or hand, and then all the other ones are the manual ones. And again, they're all wired up. Uh, we test them all, like I just showed you on the other one. Um, the the power that comes in right there. And that's I jumped the power off the main bus. That comes in out to some uh, to the double pole switches out there to turn it off, and then these here will run out to the to the actual uh, engine terminal tracks. I did test them uh, using RR ramp meter, put it on there and uh, you know, had everything off, turned it on and got the, the 15, 15.1 volts. So I know there's power there. And then probably what I'll do is then I'll actually run these out because I know roughly uh, where those tracks are gonna be and just have them ready to go and ready to run the feeders up when the time comes. So this is a little bit kludgy. I had to actually move um, the, the terminal blocks because I, I had them initially I had them lined up in here not knowing exactly that I was going to go with this particular layout when I actually built the, the cabinet itself um, so I had to move them I didn't feel like recrimping the wires I got lazy that's why they kind of look like a little loopy loopy there but uh, electricity doesn't really care if it's got uh, a little bit of extra loops to go through um, so that's the the back cabinet there wired up the 5 volt bus come in the top and the resistors are right there uh, so if you ever need to change a resistor, we just have to unscrew it and put a new resistor in. I believe there are 240 ohm resistors we're using right now. We tried that. That's the one that we liked for the for the brightness that uh, that you see. Um, and then of course you have to run the the wires out to the turnouts. So that's where they come off of the off of the tortoise. And they're all running back. I'm using six conductor, basically telephone. Uh, 24 gauge conductor with one wire uh, not used uh, and I did save them uh, you'll, you'll see right there there's the extra wire it's a white wire because in one of these I was hooking up I think it was over in 97 when I cut it and I, when I cut through the uh, the insulation I actually nicked the yellow one um, so I had to <laughs> uh, after a little bit of swearing I realized oh wait a minute, I saw the white one 
Uh, so I just had to swap it. So I just had to go out and then take the yellow off, put the white back on, and then use the white. So uh, recommend you do that if you're gonna. If you're, that's I saved it. I saved the. Uh, you can't really see it in here, but the white wire is saved in case anything happens and I have to use it again. Uh, it saved my butt in that one case. Otherwise, I would have been ripping it out and pouring in the whole new cable uh, back to the cabinet. All right, let's go take a look at uh, Pittsfield, which is not done but is in process. Oh, sorry, before Pittsfield, here's the inside of uh, Eugene West. Again, these are the, the cables for the power uh, coming from the layout and then through the, the switches there that then go out to the, uh, to the engine terminal tracks. Uh, so that's the inside of that. Very similar to the three card for the LED circuit, the SMC12 there in the corner and a, and a large ground block. And then the Euro blocks where all of the uh, LED positive from the LEDs go and then down to the board in the back where appropriate. And here's Pittsfield, it's not done, I don't have the switches in, I'm going to get them all in and wire them up just like the other ones, although obviously the transformer factory is nowhere to be found, buried under a bunch of other garbage right now, um, but I want to get it as far along as possible. Uh, this does have the, um, you can see I've wired the LED circuit because the LEDs are on, because uh, normally when this is down, they're grounded. Uh, and the circuit then doesn't have this light on, but since I don't have this hooked up yet, um, this is it basically it's like it's like that. Um, but till I get it wired up, those LEDs are going to be on because I have the five volt power wired in. Not a big deal. Um, but we kind of freaked out when we saw that and remembered, oh yeah, I put the five volts in. That's why it's doing that. So, so that is the uh, the, the front side. Let's take a look inside. 